Hello everyone, it's Father Norm Douglas again, St. Vincent de Paul Parish, Akron, Ohio. As you know, uh, I often speak, been speaking like this regularly for several months and always find a value in being in touch with how the Lord is speaking to my heart and, and what maybe he is saying to each of us. Uh, today, you know, I don't have what's typically, I usually have a pretty positive message and yet it's ultimately positive, ultimately hopeful. Uh, what I want to talk briefly about are the, uh, uh, the two mass shootings in the last uh, 10 days at this time that happened in our country after so many more before. Uh, we do know that on May 14th in Buffalo, New York, a, at a supermarket, which was predominantly in a black community, uh, 10, 10 people who were shopping in that supermarket were killed. All were black. Uh, it came to be that the person who did it had racial attitudes and very negativity toward blacks. He himself was, was killed. And then we just heard uh, yesterday, I'm talking this day, 10 days later from May 14th to May 24th. And, and so here uh, in a school, uh, in a small town in Texas, uh, 21 people were killed. 19 of them were children be in between seventh, or excuse me, second, third, and fourth grade and two adult teachers. Horrendous. I'm sure all of us are tired of hearing about this, reading about this, catching a headline. I know I talked to a good friend of mine, a black pastor, the day after what happened in Buffalo. And he said it this way for him, and I'm sure for all of us, but especially for the black community, he said, we are just so exhausted. We just, it, 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 it's still horrendous to, to keep hearing people want to kill us because of the color of our skin and, and, and just not being able to grasp that and, and being saddened and being fearful for our families in such a situation. And then, uh, obviously, yesterday, the horrible act in a grade school. And I talked to a few parents and teachers today and of course, they're sick into their stomach, they're sad, they're confused, uh, you know, just children, little children, and just starting off in life, and, and why and how somebody would do that and be led to do that. Uh, we know that uh, whenever these events happen, that we say we gotta come together, we gotta talk, we gotta see what can we do to lessen this kind of thing happening. And I know we get into the issue, and we do need to get into the issue of gun control. And certainly there's many sharp differences of opinion on that. At the same time, uh, we probably need to see how can we come together even with our differences and see is it possible especially in legislature and, and, and in schools and, and places all throughout our country that we can talk and see, is there some common ground we could realize? I don't want to talk about the specifics. A lot of people are talking about uh, what might be able to be done in, in terms of gun control and what, what would be the safest things we can do. I want to talk briefly about the discussions themselves. Because too often the discussions, whether it's in family members or, or whether it's in Congress, uh, people start talking about this, yelling, fighting, arguing, not getting anywhere, each coming up with their own point of view. Uh, a lot of you know that the Catholic Church recently, uh, the Pope was calling for a synod, a worldwide synod and synods in each parish, which basically were bringing people together, listening to each other, even with our differences, and, and being as open as we can to the Spirit in, in what we might need to hear and do something about. I want to apply some of the guidelines that came out for this synod to have the kind of discussion where, where there's differences, we can still make progress, we can still hear each other out, and maybe come together and do our best in, in coming up with a solution that gets input from all of us. So I'm gonna read just a few of the, uh, the guidelines for a synod that could be a guideline for any discussion anywhere about this intense debated topic. Uh, first, uh, the whole notion of having a synod or a conversation is that we are invited to speak with authentic courage and honesty. 
And I think both are needed, aren't they? The courage to speak up, whether people see our point of view or not, to, and to speak from a, a heart of love and, and for those of us of faith, and, and, and certainly uh, uh, to listen and, and to really want to hear each other. Uh, humility. Wow, this is, needs to be talked about more and more in all these conversations. Humility and listening. That uh, and and being able to uh, uh, to to say, hey, I see some insights, but but I don't have the whole picture. And when we are humble, maybe to believe, yes, we have something to hear from others. Maybe there's a point of view that's valuable instead of dismissing them right offhand. And and it's not about getting in a debate and and trying to convince others I'm right and you're wrong but rather, hey, let's listen humbly together. And for those of people of faith, maybe what's the spirit of a loving God saying in the midst of this? Uh, also, that dialogue uh, like this should lead to newness, being willing to change our opinions based on what we've heard from others. Maybe there's an insight from them that, you know, I never thought about that, or maybe I've resisted to that, or maybe I've simply said, that has nothing to do with this. Do I need to listen again? to each other and especially get away from that attitude that I have nothing to learn from anybody else. I'm right, people with me are rightly motivated and, and others are not. Also with that, an openness to conversion and change. We are often resistant for those of us Christian who could believe the Spirit can be talking to us in these conversations, resistant to maybe uh, what the Spirit is asking us to be about to abandon especially attitudes of complacency and comfort that lead us to make decisions purely on the basis of how things have always been in the past. Just a couple more of these I wanna mention. Wow, leaving behind our prejudices and stereotypes. You know, we can be weighed down by them uh, to free our minds and hearts from prejudice and that lead us to the wrong, uh, on, wrong path and toward ignorance and division overcoming ideologies. Yeah, we must avoid the risk of grading, giving greater importance to our ideas than the reality of coming together, hearing each other out, and seeing what can we do together to make our world better, to respond to this issue and other issues. Finally, having a, a certain measure of hope. I think in our time today, there can be a certain despair. Ah, we haven't done it, it's not gonna help. But, you know, We've got to believe if we try, if we're open to a spirit of a loving God, a God who can give us wisdom and perspective, that just possibly something good can come out of this. We need to believe that. We need to be beacons of hope and not prophets of doom. And, and with that attitude uh, saying, hey God, you are here and you, can, you are at work but you work in us and through us, we're called to do our part to partner with you in making the world more the way you want it to be, beginning with these kind of heartfelt conversations that are done in, in loving ways. God bless you in any of the conversations you have. God bless our nation.